Good morning. God be with you. We will begin with the prophet Isaiah. And I'd like you to turn with me to page 1072 or 1073 in the Bibles in your pews. We will be looking at the ninth chapter of Isaiah. And we're going to look at how it points to Jesus' first ministry. That's page 1072. That's Isaiah 9. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 7. Take a moment to get there. If you're there, let me know by saying amen. amen. The prophet Isaiah. After a moment of despair, he wrote, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have increased the nation and enlarged their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. For our second lesson, we look at our brother Paul as he talks to the Corinthian church and to us about a word that tends to give problems. The word is unity. The verse is the 10th through 18th verses of the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. In the Bibles in your pews, that's page 1770 or 1772, depending on which uh, of the NIVs you're looking at. Paul talks about divisions in the church and asks us to quit that because Jesus is one and he wants us to be one. If you're there, please let me know by saying amen. All right. Our brother Paul writes, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Brethren, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross be empty, the cross of Christ be empty of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. To honor Jesus Christ and his gospel, we respectfully ask that those of you who are physically able, please rise. The Holy Gospel found appointed for this day is found in the Gospel record of St. Matthew. 
We'll be reading from the fourth chapter, the 12th to 25th verses, on page 1500 in the Bibles in your pews. Jesus' ministry comes to Galilee. If you're there, say amen. amen. Starting with verse 12, the scripture says, When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Nephtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Nephtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of a shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed them. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria. The people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. This is the gospel. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of the devil. This is the same crowd 
that's been anticipating a savior for several thousand years. This is the same crowd that has remained faithful to the law, the same crowd that has been looking and seeking. This is the same crowd that has been anxious, had anxious eyes. When are you coming, Lord? When are you coming? I'm bringing my sacrifices to the altar. When are you coming? This is the same crowd that has their arms wide open when the Savior comes in order to receive all that he has for them. And what does Jesus bring to them? He brings peace. Amen? The first thing he brings, he brings them peace. Because they're living in chaotic times. They're living in times where they're trying to fulfill the law and they're failing over and over and over again. So he brings them peace. He also brings them, as we know, hope. Because in the midst of their lives, they're dealing with some dark issues. They're dealing with their sin. They're dealing with chaos. They're dealing with all kinds of idolatry. There are crises happening all around them. So Jesus brings them hope. He also brings them the unconditional love that comes from the Father. They need to experience that type of love versus a conditional love based upon the law of God. He also brings joy to them as well. So that when they wake up in the morning, they will be able to clearly see from whence comes their help. Their help would come from the Lord. Amen? And then finally, he brings forgiveness. Forgiveness for a world that needs to be able to know that sin is not okay. It's not okay. Breaking the law of God is not okay. He brings to them forgiveness so they can understand that not only are they forgiven for the sins past and present, but for sins all once and for all will be taken away from them and they no longer have to worry about the law of God resting upon their heads. Amen? So saints, that's what our text gives us this morning. Now let's take a, a step because this is where we are. Let's, let's fast forward this 2,000 year old text to 2017, January the 22nd. And let us as a people of God who are in this third week of the Epiphany celebration be able to take this on our own. The message is, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Say that with me again. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. It's important for us, saints, as the people of God, to know that Jesus, as he's talking to his disciples, he wants to know it's about the Jews and the Gentiles repenting, not just the Jews, not just the Gentiles. Here we are in 2017, saints, and we've been blessed. We've been blessed. Think about the blessing. We walked into a new calendar year. Amen? We walked into a new church year way back in November. Amen? We have been blessed to be able to start the celebration of the 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Church as a nation and as a world. So you can hear all kind of things about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther and his reformation of the church 500 years ago. We're living in these times, blessed to be able to see it. We're living in a time where we're blessed to see a transition in the presidential power. Even though we may not like what we see, we're blessed to be alive to see it with our own eyes as the people of God. And we, are know, we know that even though in the midst of this economic strife and social strife and in the midst of the moral strife that we're dealing with and the spiritual strife and clearly the political strife that we're in as a people of God, we know that we are blessed people because we are here in it today. Amen? The message that we take to the world has not changed. And the message is what? Repent for the kingdom of God is near. In the midst of being a blessed people, we don't change the message. It came to us, my Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, for those disciples and for us as disciples. The Lamb of God came to take away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God came to set the captives free. The Lamb of God came to bind up the brokenhearted. The Lamb of God came to guide his people to the gates of heaven. The Lamb of God came to bring the peace the hope, the love, the joy, and everything we need, especially forgiveness. 
with the simple phrase, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Amen? Now, saints, I want to ask you some true false questions this morning. And I want you to think about them before you answer. And they're not trick questions. Amen? I would never do that to you. But they're meant to make you think just a little bit this morning. Are you ready to give me a true or false answer this morning? All right, here we go. Here we are, living in 2017 as a people of God, knowing how blessed we are, knowing what the message is we, that we must take to the world, knowing that we're at a crossroads in our nation, knowing that we are uh, and have some personal dilemmas, and knowing that some in our, somewhere in our lives we're at an intersection as well. We still somehow believe that being baptized is just enough. I'm a baptized, believe in our Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I can rest on that. True or false? There must be some more for us to do. Amen? It's not just enough to receive the water, to be blessed with the Spirit, but there's something we have to be doing with the blessing of being baptized. Amen? There's something that God wants us to establish for his kingdom as we tell people about the power that was given to us in our faith relationship and through the word of God and through that water that set us free and cleansed us and connected us to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, not for one day, but for eternity. Amen? Ready for the next true or false question? You did pretty good on that one, saints. Here's the next one. We would rather just come to church and say, I've been to church, sit in the pew, get what we need at church, and then leave the church and say, well, that was a nice service. True or false? Amen. We don't just come sitting and warm the pew. The pew don't need us to warm the pew. Amen. We come to be fed, don't we? We come to be nourished. We come to be equipped. We, we come so that we can leave this place and we can go tell the message. What's the message? Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. That's why we come. So that we get the message straight. So that our family members and our co-workers and our neighbors along the way, the stranger in the market, the person we run into at Target and, and Macy's, they know that they understand that they will not get to heaven unless they what? Repent for the kingdom of God is near. All right, pretty good on that one. I got one more for you. Can you handle it? All right. We would rather use our time, our talents, and our treasures the way we want versus the way God wants. True or false? <laughs> okay, I heard some truths. Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's, it's my life. I can do what I want with my life. You know what I mean? And I can do it. But that's not, you're right, it's false. Everything that we have, all that we are, from the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night is directed by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? And so it's so important for us as the people of God never to allow ourselves to let Satan trick us and manipulate us in our hearts and our minds and thinking that we are running our own destiny. But we are truly in the work and in the hands of Almighty God because we committed ourselves to him and the work that he wants to accomplish through us. Because the message that we bring to the world is what? Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Amen. So saints, we want to leave the sanctuary this morning. We want to go into our homes, go into the communities. We want to go out through the city of the angels. We want to go out through the state of California. We want to be able to go throughout our nation. We want to be able to reach down into the heart and the minds of people who are out there not understanding a relationship with Jesus. We want to take away all the lies and all the masks and all the burdens and, and all those things that people carry in their lives. And we want to give them the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We know we have it. We live with it every day. Why would we deny someone else from having the hope that we have in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? What's the message, saints, we're going to leave the sanctuary with this morning? Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And in repentance, all the blessings of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ walked to Calvary, his victory at Calvary, his resurrection at Calvary, his ascension to the Father's right side will be not only ours, but also theirs. Amen? Let's pray. 
With that being said, Saint, let's rise and sing our closing hymn, hymn number 220. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, number 220. to drink. 